one of the key issues for the future is our relations between men and technology. We spoke about Aristoteles, about Socrates, let me speak just one moment, about uh, uh, Michelangelo. This is the famous uh, Cappella Sixtina in, uh, in the Vatican. And here you see that man and God wants to give, the, give them the hand. Today, with arti artificial intelligence, the so-called transhumanism, the robotic, the relation between nano, bio, and ICT, sometimes this is the new picture. And you can see where are we going in this technology and innovation. And I'm very, there is certainly some major problem of scarcity of resources. There is, uh, in the other, in, at the Academy of Science today, there is a big meeting on sustainability. It's true that global extraction have been increasing, increasing. Today, we, we extract around 70 billion tons of materials from the Earth every year. And this is increasing. This is, I think, a, a strong message. But technology, sometimes we had the right messages, but the wrong anticipation of technological progress. Remember Malthus and his essay on the principle of population. He was thinking that the Earth will never be able to afford a population bigger than, I don't remember, if, I think it was around 1.5 billion people, and then the Earth will be, uh, will be dead. Today we are 7 billion, we expect 10 billion, and we are affording this increasing of population. The Meadows report was also in the, you remember just uh, before the oil crisis of 1973, we will not get any more oil in 2000. You may remember this, uh, the, the, this uh, Malthus report. And the association of the study of peak oil and gas, I think the messages, the political message that they were giving was completely right. We should take care on the increasing of population. We should take care of our oil. We should take care of our plateau of consumption. But they were always anticipating badly the technological progress. And I think that's something for the future that we should take into account. Obviously, the mega cities, if you think of cities of several tens of millions, uh, are creating huge, huge damages in terms of air pollution, in terms of waste, in terms of water needs. Uh, we have also uh, a question for Europe. Sometimes I have colleagues in Germany which spoke to me about the Große Deutschland. And they say, do you know that Germany is 1% of the world population? 1%. I do not miss a zero. I mean, if we want to be an actor in the world of tomorrow, we need to have a united Europe. I'm not saying that just because I'm a commissioned civil servant, but I'm really thinking that if you look at the map of the world, this may be the map of the world that our, our children will see. And I think that's a key question for Europe. If we don't want to become an increasingly relevant outgrowth of the Asian continent, we need to be more unified. Then the question of today, are co-creation, collaborative economy and open innovation just one more strand of capitalism, or is it fundamentally new because it brings technology and social innovation together? I think this is a fundamental question. Globalization, digitalization, virtualization make work, for example, extremely portable. We speak about the digital nomads. Some people in this room are probably digital nomads, where you are not uh, directly connected to a certain place, but you can work everywhere. Co-creation, it's a key principle that we are promoting a lot at the EU level. We need to have more connection with the so-called uh, for example, user-driven innovation. We had many examples, and the thanks very much, Pedro, for the example, the concrete example, because when we speak about user-driven user innovation in our research and innovation framework program, people think that we are extremely theoretical, that we are looking at 2050. I say, not at all. This is very concrete stuff, and you provide, I think, more than 15 examples of this user-driven innovation. This is a call for proposal that uh, the Commission has published a few days ago. I strongly recommend it to, to read it. With whatever search engine, you just type co-creation 2017-2 and you got the topic, the research topic, which is open for competition. It's mostly for research and for innovators. The new businesses, spin-offs, are highly welcome to work on this uh, issue. You have many uh, aspects on, on this. Let me give you a, a flavor of innovations. Still, we are in a post-industrial world. Our terminology 
it's very much connected to the classical product innovation or technological innovation. When I'm discussing with my colleagues, they always think, ah, okay, the new smartphone, the new internal combustion engine, the new electrical cars, they have a, a, a real product innovation. There is many others. You have the process innovation, the marketing innovation. How do you eat Nutella at 11 o'clock in the night? This is typically marketing innovation. We have organizational innovation and social innovation. I think that this is one aspect where Europe can be ahead in the world in terms of innovation. We have the knowledge, we have the collaborative way, we have this good combination of individualistic and collective values. I think that we can work a lot on this social innovation. We have published a prize on social innovation. As many of you are connected, you can still vote on this uh, website, ec.europa.eu slash horizon prize. We are putting a lot of emphasis on uh, inducement price. The idea is to leverage a big amount of money to work on this uh, issue. Should we work on childhood obesity, on aging population, on integration of uh, immigrants, on women-led enterprise, or community-led clean energy generation? I think that all the topics are extremely relevant and do not hesitate to click, it takes you two minutes, and you can vote and get it this inducement prize in the future on, uh, on your subject. Open innovation. I think we have lived during almost 100 years with a closed innovation, where the enterprise was really making the, uh, the work, the research work alone. Everything was IPR, copyright. Copyright, one day I discussed with an Italian and a French translator, it's not the right to copy because they had the tendency. Some of you may remember the first uh, translation, machine translation of copyright, and you get the right to uh, copy. That was uh, a good old time of the, the initial machinery uh, automatic translation. But I think that open innovation, public institutions, research institutes, capital providers, and educational organizations are working together. This seems theoretical. When you look at the list of participants of today, you will see that this is not so theoretical. You have public administration, I've seen some ministers, you have uh, spin-offs, you have banking, which is a very traditional at the beginning. And then thanks to people like Emrique, you have a really a forward-looking banking system for which we uh, urgently need in, in Europe. Uh, one element which I would like to raise to your attention is two social trends that we are, looking, we are seeing, we are, uh, seeing in, in, in Europe and in the world. The first is the individual empowerment. You may remember this picture that was uh, Mrs. Torning Schmidt, which take a selfie with Obama and Cameron. That was during the funeral of uh, Nelson Mandela. It was maybe not the most appropriate. But at least you see the individual empowerment. During centuries, only extremely important people can have a selfie, painted by Leonardo, by uh, Michelangelo, or many others. Today, whatever children of uh, 12 years old can have a selfie. I think this individual empowerment, we are looking at in the personalized medicine. You have a lot of personalized medicine. You have in the energy sector, the micro combined heat and power, where you produce your heating and your electricity, and the self-driving one-person car. This, I think, is a major, uh, it's a major trend, a social trend. Close to that, you have the trend towards a shared economy this collaborative economy, which is taking place. Uh, I, I like to give the example of a social exchange, uh, of social responsibility, which become a key element of strong social trends. Even the more dirty, big industry are taking care of the society, of the environment. They are starting to see it's not only because it's important for the marketing policy, which is obviously one element, but it's also important to attract the best staff. If you want to have the best engineers at Shell, at BP, or at Exxon, you cannot be a dirty industry. You need to have this value into, uh, to take this value into account. Uh, I like very much the Roman law. That was my heritage, my national heritage, maybe. And there was this concept of proprietas, the ownership. This is my car. This is my DVD. This is my bicycle. I think that through the power of internet and smartphones, the younger generation, my, my son Alessandro, 13 years old, I suggest him to offer him a bicycle, and he told me, Daddy, but I have 12 bicycles in front of the house. 
I think that this is kind of new way of, uh, of thinking. Less ownership and more access. It could be sharing, it could be swapping, it could be renting. And you have many examples. And I think that these two tendencies between individual empowerment and collaborative economy, the, let's say the, 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 uh, the, the geographical space that can live, that can uh, make exploit these two social trends, individual empowerment and collaborative economy, will have a great uh, future. Uh, when we were at the economic courses, we spoke a lot about economies of scale. Today, we should speak more and more about economies of scope, with the same platforms allowing savings and profits. And we speak also about economies of network. And obviously, sustainability is probably an emblematic sector of co-creation, co-production, and co-innovation. Co uh, let me give you some more philosophical aspects. I have still two minutes. First of all, what, we, what is the value that we give to time? I think that we are, Alain a French uh, thinker, was speaking about le règne de l'immédiateté, about it's really everything should be instantaneous, instantaneous. And here it's on the Istanbul, uh, on the Bosphor, at almost 24 hours a day, in order to make 1,100 meters, you need two hours to go and to come back due to traffic jam. What's the value of time? We spoke a lot about planned obsolescence. I like to remember that there is also the wished obsolescence. If you take fashion, it's really a wished obsolescence. You want to change your clothes every three months, every six months, every year. This is the, the fashion. And obviously the, the lifestyles that we have. This is on the left side, it's my car, Fiat 500, 1957. Uh, with the very nice wing uh, doors. I can bring my three children in this car. But the fashion today is not this kind of car. If you look at the new Beetle, let me not nationalistic, if you look at the new Beetle, the new Mini or the new Cinquecento Max, it's not the same philosophy. We are having uh, almost one ton of material in order to transport 70, 80 kilograms. And I think that this is the kind of things that we should take into account. You certainly know that you pay more for the oil that you put in your car than the oil that you put in your salad. I'm sure that, that, that you, you know that. The relation between man and nature, let me quote Pope Francis, it's a beautiful encyclical letter, even for the non-Catholic. The encyclical letter, the integral ecology, it's a wonderful document. It's a long letter, huh? 156 pages, but it's worthwhile to read. And you have many uh, philosophers, thinkers, and obviously the Commission, which is working on this new relation on nature capital. What's the real price? We speak sometimes about the high or the low price of oil, 159 liters of oil. You know, the cost generates between 10 and 150. Now we should be at around $50 per barrel. But what will be this price for Chanel number no. 5? Between 200 and 300,000 euros, according to the European countries. What is the price that we think deserves a certain uh, product or a certain service? This is Pablo Picasso, Les Femmes d'Alger. It was sold $179 million on the 11th of May. And I was thinking, I enjoy more a work with my three children. I was with some friends at the Saint Schumann, at the, uh, at the party of Europe, the open doors, than to have Les Femmes d'Alger in my living room. I think the value of things, sometimes the value of happiness, uh, are important. Let me just conclude by, by the, the, the following slide. We should redefine success and experiencing well-being. We should have a new narrative about growth and jobs. It's not overgrowth what we need. Learning, but also how to learn. The shared economy and preservation of resources. And then we speak a lot about the tangible investments. Today we are in a more, a more intangible world. And I think that we should also think on beyond GDP. Thank you very much for your attention.